To see you, we want to. We want to know you. You know, so many times. How many times have you heard Gus say, "I don't want to know about you. I want to know you." And a number of years ago, when I wrote, I wrote this song, I was at that place. God, my desire is to know you, but my will's in the way. 
Waiting in silence, listening for your voice. Speak, Lord, and I'll obey. Can we sing that as a prayer this morning? I mean, study is important, but you study to know him, to be found in him, to be used by him, so your life is changed. Otherwise, it's head knowledge. I want my life to mean something. As we end these days, as we, as we live out our final days, or however many days that God has given us, I want to finish the race well. Run to win. You know, Gus talks about, uh, you know, uh, he wants to fight. 300 men want to get into a fight for the souls of men and the glory of God. What does that fight look like? It's not this. It's men that are not unashamed, that are abandoned, that are not afraid to worship and give God Almighty our praise. And men that will do that, you know, they sent the worshipers and the singers ahead of the battle. If you're trying to do this, you've got the wrong kind of fight, man. Know him. Know him well. Spend time in his presence. Abandon yourself. Because if you don't know how to worship and praise, your first thousand years in heaven are going to be hell. <laughs> Can I say that? Oh, I just did. And I want to know him. I'm, you know, sometimes we forget where we came from. And once in a while, God brings us back to that point and says, man, you were dying. You were lost. You, you didn't have anything. And I rescued you. I love you so much. Amen. And even, even since we've been walking with him, we do stupid things. Okay, I'm not alone. Thanks. Two other guys in here. Yeah, we do stupid stuff. And God says, come on, son, get out of there. Let's go here. We're going to go here. We're going to... Let me help you. I'm not here to condemn you. I'm here to, and, and to set your soul on fire, to change your heart, your thinking, your actions, your emotions. They get transformed. And then you will speak his name. You will sing to him like you've never sang. If you don't know how to do that, I wonder, you better check your pulse. Have you got a hold of the living God? He wants to know you. He wants, he wants you to come to him. He, he wants to pour his life into you. Let's sing this song. Let this be our prayer this morning. My desire is to know you. What my will is in the way. Waiting in silence. Waiting in silence. Listening for your voice. Listening for your voice. Speak, Lord. I 
gorgeous song that you wrote about my will gets in the way amen yeah we're, we're very good at allowing our <laughs> oh, will to get yeah, in the way huh? yeah wow all right hey good morning men seats <laughs> i like i'd raise my voice but i don't want to <laughs> yeah you I don't, don't want to scare the scare children. Them. hey merry christmas everybody hey hey what do you think what do you think of the ensembles can we say that? Can we say yeah. ensemble? Ensemble. When it comes to men and clothing? Yeah. Hey, what do you think? Look at it. Look at We're almost twins. <laughs> this is Merry Christmas oh, right this here. It says Merry Christmas all over the place. Uh, 
Uh. Hey, so, uh, yeah, happy Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, it's nice and warm out. Uh, thank you, Father, for the rain. Amen. Right? We got, good rain. Yeah, we got about two and a quarter inches at the house, yep. according to the, the thing. <laughs> the and, thing. Yeah, the thing. And uh, it's, it's a gift. You know, we keep praying and because we're men of prayer. Yep. We, Amen. we don't cease. And uh, I'm sitting here. You know, I, I uh, have, it's such a gift to be able to say good morning to most of you guys as, as you come in. Some of you guys sneak in through the back door and stuff, and I'll catch you one of these days. But <laughs> no, just, uh, it's, I, <laughs> there are so many of you guys that, that we're praying for. Amen. Uh, Thank you for being here. Man, um, well, I, I got to hug Tim, <laughs> you know, and he, you're a beautiful bride, my friend. Yeah. Uh, she's going to be victorious on this side or the other side of glory, my friend. Yeah. Uh, she had either a stroke or seizures, definitely seizures, right? Uh, but the uh, tumors in her brain are growing. Uh, she's only 65 years old. Her name is Linda. Just a beautiful woman of God. Beautiful woman of God. Uh, and it is a pleasure to pray for you, my brother. It really is. Yeah. Um, but we're in this together, aren't we? Yes, we are. Uh, and Love there's you, so Tim. much to be thankful for. There's so much to rejoice over. Yeah. In the uh, midst of the storms and the opportunities it's before fantastic. us. fantastic. Yeah. So I just wanted to wish you a Merry Christmas. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Seems like an emotional day for us today for yeah. some unknown reason. Guys, you might, uh, you might notice that this whole thing is kind of in change. For you over here, you wouldn't be able to see the words. Well, there wasn't any words up there in that second song anyway. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you don't know that. <laughs> but yeah. you wouldn't have known that anyway yeah. because you can't see. The, we got a, the best Christmas ever pageant is going to be here on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Yeah, it's going to be quite a production. It's going to be quite a deal. It's, it's going to be dynamic, honestly. Uh, you, you, uh, if you were to go online to reserve uh, a, a ticket or a seat, you can't. There, everything is full. Yeah. But, but the, still try to get in here. There are blocks of <laughs> seats that have been reserved for walk-ins. That's walk -ins. what I tell people. Yeah. Yeah. Still try to get in here. Yeah. There are walk-ins available. I want to so watch them come. tell you. I want to watch somebody tell you, no, you can't come. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, you, if that happens, you call me. I'll come yeah. and fight next yeah. to you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, you can't come into this. No. Uh, Friday is at 6 o'clock. Saturday is also at 6 o'clock. Yeah. This Sunday is a matinee performance at 1400. Right. Which is 2 o'clock. And I think, uh, I think the doors open on, uh, at 530. Okay, roger that. Yeah. Roger that. So. Was that this morning? Yeah, this morning. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, Gus and I are having coffee this yeah. morning. Yeah. And, what do we see? And I saw we saw three PD units roll up there and and fire. And then I told Gus because fire was returning. I said, if the fire guys are coming back already, it means it wasn't. And you said it's hopefully not someone who's a band of brothers on his way here. <laughs> yeah, I did say that, didn't yeah. I? Well, yeah. it sounds like it was Doug. <laughs> Okay. Well, that truck, yeah, that Dodge, it was a Dodge. I mean, it was getting a little old anyway. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, well, hey, we do have uh, yeah. some people going to be doing some ministry. Yeah, hey, Warren, come Warren, on up here. Carl, Carl Randy, and come Randy, on up here. come on up. Uh, his Healing Hands is heading out to uh, Mexico uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, they're pretty motivated men, so they get going at about zero three hundred. But we need to pray for them because they're older. They are. <laughs> yeah. Come on in here. And they're leaving Come at zero dark here. thirty. <laughs> yeah. Come on in here, Warren. Yeah. Get, get in here next to Gus. <laughs> and and you got. Come on. In. <laughs> and you're and you're dri and you're driving, aren't you? You're driving. Yeah. yeah. Remember who's the oldest? The the oldest <laughs> is right here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, uh, we are men of action, yeah. right? Not only are we men of prayer, but we're men of action. And uh, you guys have been doing this a very long time. And so I know it's a walk in the park, um, but it is still significant for us that don't get to go. 
um, it is significant. It's our pleasure to be able to support you monetarily. His Healing Hands is the ministry, if you're not familiar. It's, uh, it's, it's Warren's ministry and uh, that he started, what, like two years ago or whatever. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but if you, can't, if, if you can't support him monetarily, if you can't go physically, then we pray. And this man has so many great stories about... Hopefully do both. Hopefully do both, right. Yeah. Or all three. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I've lived 77 years. And you think about what you've learned in life. And I realize that the only thing that's of value in life, the only thing is standing in front of a man and telling him about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yep. Amen. One man at a time. Amen. Amen. That's perfect. That's, yeah. that's what changes life. That's yeah. what changes life. The only thing that works. Amen. <laughs> Holy One, why don't you pray over I'm these. trying. <laughs> Where did this come from? You know, yeah. That's, that's okay. called mercy. Yeah. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Yeah. Uh, pray with me, man. Oh, Father God, we are overwhelmed by you. We love you so much. And uh, as I stand here with my hands on these men, dear brothers, friends, warriors, I ask a blessing. Yes. As they get into their rigs tomorrow morning, at 3 o'clock in the morning is pretty, is pretty, it's pretty late in the afternoon, but I, I understand. But there's the, the traffic, the weather. Father, would you pave the way for them? Would you, uh, you've journey. already outlined yeah, the itinerary. You've allowed them to create the itinerary, Father. I just ask a blessing on that itinerary. The men and women that they're going to meet, Father, will they see you and them? Yes. Father, that is our prayer. These are men of God, men of prayer. And, Father, we ask that you keep them, that you protect them, that you guide them, that you direct them. Father, we're so looking forward to hearing great results uh, I know they're going to be with a lot of, uh, uh, there's a small clinic that's going on, Father, and I know that there's leadership training going on. Just have your hand in it all, Father, all the dots and the tittles. Yes. Father, we love you so much, and uh, uh, we're just so looking forward to hearing from them when they get back, Father. We love you in Jesus' name. Father, I also wanted to ask for the people they're going to meet that they will be so refreshed and renewed, and they will feel so valued. Mm -hmm. They will know how precious they are. No matter what age, no matter what their background, no matter what their occupations, may it be a holy time. And as they go there, Father, everything they do will be for your glory. As this man preaches your eternal breath, as Randy does that, may it come out with the power and the authority and the love and the full of grace and the kindness of all that you are. May these men and women, as they cross the border, as anyone meets them, not only just the safety, but when they get, anyone gets to meet them, may they get to meet you. Yes. Send them out, Father. They are your fragrance. They are the aroma of Christ. Amen. And we praise you in the love of Christ. Amen. 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 Thank, you, man. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you, man of God. Thank you, Carl. Yeah, bless you. All right. Okie dokie. Let's get some work done, huh? All right, men of the Most High hey, God. Take a picture of this. This, this, this hey, is a good look yeah, right here. We did this good says, for Christmas, did we not? This says Merry Christmas right uh, this, here, doesn't this it? This says Merry Christmas. <laughs> and we say we're like a, two emotional opportunities uh, today. It's called mercy. Yeah. <laughs> I'll talk to you. Guys, get around the table. We've got just a little, a short time. Uh, what should the lives of men who say they are men of God look like? I uh, hope you enjoy those scriptures.
I want to talk to you. Yeah, grab your coffee, grab a, a donut, grab one of the protein donuts. That means it has nuts and chocolate on it. All right. Hey, Gary, I like your hat. Did you show everybody at your table? Got a great hat. He's got a hat that says, men of God make a difference. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Men of God make a difference. That's really cool. And Garrett, nice to have you here, a Wyoming boy who shows that God is really faithful. He, he saved even a Marine down here, <laughs> and it was really nice. I said, you have to know that God's grace is really effective because he can save Marines. And uh, when we were in the Marines, we didn't look any, you wouldn't have wondered if we were saved or not, you know. Uh, we were doing what we were trained to do. Uh, most of the time. <laughs> the other time we were doing things that no one trained us to do. It was just our sin nature active. But uh, today, I, uh, this is my last time with you guys for a while. And uh, I want to, uh, it's about holiness, but you know, the scripture says, make every effort to live at peace with all men. That's part of what holiness is. Uh, we won't live at peace with all men. That's not, it will not happen. But it says, as far as it depends on us. Make every effort to live at peace with all men and be holy. Amen. For without, without holiness, you will not see the Lord. This is not, this isn't a possible, it, it's not a maybe, it's you will not. It's not going to happen. So we not, we've got to understand what is holiness. Well, part of the deal is what you see in, out of Ephesians. One of the, the highest goals that could ever be told to us. I mean, it's one thing to be told, be joyful always. And, you, and, and many of you are trying to still figure that one out. Just being joyful. A simple thing like all God says, just be joyful always. And we can't quite get there. Well then, give thanks and everything. Well, we don't quite get there. Okay, well if you can't grab that, then make it simpler. Just be an imitator of God. Then you're done. Okay? Be an imitator of God as dearly loved children. That's what you're, that's the highest calling. How in the world and so we're going to, you, you look at this, what does it mean to be an imitator of God? Well, some of the basics are, first off, you've had to be reborn. You've had to be rebirthed in your spirit. So let's say you're reborn. Let's say that you came to a place that when God found you, he found you. You didn't find him. He found you because we were dead in our trespass and sin. He finds you. He awakens you and offers you himself. He offers you his grace through faith. Faith is all of a sudden, for the first time in your life at that moment, you may have felt like I did, absolutely scared, nervous, and all of a sudden you've never, you can always say you believe in God, He's on our money, we believe in God, we, in God we trust, but it's different when all of a sudden it's personal. And all of a sudden, for the first time, you are going to say, I trust you. I am receiving what you say. You say that I can be completely condemnation free. 
in Christ. You say that he is my Savior. I believe that. You say he rose from the dead. I wasn't there. But I believe you. And in a nanosecond, there's a transformation that took place. You were rebirthed. So then he goes on, and some of the little basics, and, and, I, and we only have a few minutes, I wish I had longer on this one, but do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. So let's start right away with our mouth. Okay, right away with our mouth. How can I say do not, if he tells me do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, Gus, I must have the power to not let any unwholesome talk come out of my mouth. Now, that wasn't the case previous. I, have, I think I've shared with you guys before, after I got out of the Marine Corps and I, I brought a motorcycle and I, was, I went from California to New York and back in 1969. And somewhere in Detroit, I don't remember, I was at a nightclub with some former Marines friends and we had to kind of dress up and whatever it was. I remember I didn't have those kind of clothes so my friend let me use his and we go to this beautiful nightclub and these bouncers, these big black men in, in uh, the nicest suits you have ever seen in your life, just shy of the tuxedo, walk up to me and say, sir, we're going to have to ask you to leave. And I said, what the blankety blank for? And they said, that's what's for. <laughs> the, people of, the people around you in the nightclub are offended by your speech. Can you imagine that today? And they escorted me out of the club. I was so less than happy that I went and packed up my gear and I left. <laughs> I got on my motorcycle and left. Didn't understand a thing. So what is the first thing? Gus, let no unwholesome word come out of your mouth. That's what holiness starts to sense. You'll sense it right away. I gave you a power you've never had. Why? Because I gave you a nature. I gave you me. You received me. Now you have a new nature. So don't let any unwholesome word come out of your mouth. But only what is helpful. Well, what kind of, yeah, what is helpful? All of a sudden, I found myself, now I'm already married with kids, but I found that I'm supposed to have words for helpful to my wife instead of arguing. I had the gift of arguing. I called it the gift of debating. I just seemed to debate everybody all the time. And so now I have to think about helpful words. I'm not sure what helpful words are. I had to work at it. I really did, for building each other up according to their needs. Not your need, Gus. Not your want. No longer looking at anything wrongly. No longer all those things, but according to their needs. That it may be, it benefit those who are listening to you. That's how powerful your mouth is. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Well, I can grieve Him by the way I talk and what I look at. With whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all your bitterness. Gus, you... And I had it. I had bitterness and I had anger. Get rid of all your rage. Get rid of all your anger. Get rid of all your brawling. Get rid of all your slander. That gossip and slander where you start talking to somebody about someone else and you talk less than stellar about them. Along with every form of malice. Get rid of all, malice is nastiness or hatred. That's all malice is. It's just a nastiness. Get rid of it. It's a time to go. Be kind and compassionate to one another. Take that out. That's my nature. Forgive each other. Just as Christ forgave you, Gus, be an imitator of God, therefore, because you're dearly loved. So you begin to look at these things, and we're supposed to imitate our Father. Now, this harassing Scott today about mercy, and uh, that's because in one of our elders' meetings, uh, Mike was just excellent. I think it was last elders' meeting, just doing an excellent deal in the Word of God, and talking about the gifts that we have and how we're wired and all that. And we're going around the room, and as we're going around the room, and uh, we have gifts of leadership. Scott has a gift of leadership, which you can see, and that's what he has done his whole life in a CHP. He was a gift, a leader in and, and all this. And we talk about all these different things, and we would go, but he's a little shy on mercy. <laughs> that's why you heard me saying that's what mercy is. That's what Okay, he's a little shy on mercy. And as he's going around the room, and he's one of my dear friends, I mean, we've been working together for 10 years, mentoring each other, and uh, I told him today when we meet at 5 in the morning, we always meet at a little before 5 in the morning, have a cup of coffee and talk over things and pray, and, and I said, that's exactly the way I was. I used to be that way. But what happens is, as you seek your father, imitate your father, he is merciful, 
you become merciful. You become gracious. You actually become so forgiving, you forget to get offended. <laughs> you absolutely forget to get offended. That's why he says, the Lord says, I don't remember your sins anymore. I, what are you talking about? I don't remember your sins anymore. Why? You were rebirthed in my son. I don't remember your sins anymore. I, and all of a sudden, there's a change. And of course, I've seen that change in Scott continually. I've seen, I, and I, I, I like band of brothers. I said, there's a place. What are we doing? We're, we're trying to, here, here's the deal. The deal is like what Paul said, be an imitator of me as I am of Christ. And, he, and in fact, in 1 Corinthians 4, therefore I urge you to imitate me. What? We're supposed to be men of God so sure of who we are as men of God, we can literally, how, how can you make a disciple without them imitating you? Imitation isn't about pouring knowledge into them. Yes, you have to have knowledge, and yes, we do pour in knowledge, but it's pouring into a life. Imitate me. Imitate me as I imitate Christ. And then he goes on, I'm sending you Timothy, my son whom I love, who is faithful in the Lord. And what will he do when he arrives? He will remind you of my way of life. The only way we can make disciples is we can, they can only take them as far as we are. That's the only disciple I can ever make. If someone hangs around me long enough, they're going to become like me. And I'm a man after the heart of God, and they will know that. And when I sin, which they will, if they hang with me, they will, know, they will see that. They will watch with great joy what repentance looks like. See, we've got to be men, and you can't sit there and say, well, I didn't do anything. Well, you better do something because you're supposed to be an imitator of God. That's what holiness is, an imitator of God. Who are you? Well, I'm an imitator of God. Well, how did you do that? Well, God came and found me. Well, how did that happen? Well, when he found me, awakened me from the dead, and I received, I believed him. I took him at his word. I never saw him. I never could see him, but he came to me, and I knew it. I knew something was happening in my soul. I never had a spirit in me, and all of a sudden, he awakened me. I'd, he told me that if I believe, this would happen. He told me that if I believe that Jesus rose from the dead, and I confess to him now he is Lord, that I would be saved. And I, I took him at his word. And all of a sudden, I don't know how to explain it, there was a transformation. And right away, I was made new. Right away, inside, my spirit was perfect. The carcass wasn't. I was learning to take control. First thing I had to take control of was my mouth. I had to go there. Why? Because I don't want people to see my old nature. I didn't want my wife to live with the old Gus. The old Gus died. I wanted her to see the rebirth Gus. I wanted her to see the one that was after the heart of the Almighty. You know, and today I was telling Scott, I, my wife is so beautiful. I was getting up early this morning. I didn't get up that early. I mean, it was like 5 to 4 or something like that. And, and I'm getting ready, and all of a sudden, I, and in our place, because we're in the motorhome, I have the door shut, so the lights, because the bedroom's right there, and and all of a sudden, the door opens up, and my wife just comes in, and she's just hugging me. Doesn't say a word. Doesn't say a word. Just hugs me for the longest time. And then she went back to bed. I was so moved. I was so emotionally moved. I thought, Father, this is what new life's like, isn't it? We don't even have to utter words anymore. The compassion that we've had, 51 years together. And this is happening. Men of God, we have called to be holy. We must be living examples. You cannot say, well, I stay in my old nature. No, if you that's why examine yourself and test yourself. See if you're even in the faith. Why? If you're in the faith, be an imitator of God. If you're in the faith, as far as it's possible with you, live at peace with all people as far as it's possible with you. And be holy. That's what it is to imitate the Lord. There is no other exception. The whole idea is to be conformed to the very character and image of Christ. Everything I am to learn, everything I am to work at is that I, Gus Best, am conformed to the character, the mind, and the will, and the goals of my Savior. That's what it's about. I'm not here for an argument. I'm here to walk with the presence of my Lord. I, I look at this. Uh, imitator is of God. 
It is character that is shaped by a definite goal. What's the goal? My father, my Lord. My, how am I going to do this? It is a life's desire that I want intimacy. I don't want to be a believer. I want to know him, just like Gary was doing today. I want to know him. I don't want to believe in him. I want to know him. I want his joy to be my strength. And I promise you, as men of God, I'll testify to you today, his joy is my strength. I'm not hyping and jiving you. When I go through moments that feel like hell, I call them opportunities. They've been granted to me. These big problems have been granted to me where sorrow comes upon me and sorrow and, and just confusion, and they're granted to me. In those moments, I experience God's joy. And so that my wife can imitate me. And I have imitated her. She has become like the perfume of the Almighty in our home. You know, remember that, I think, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is what? A new what? A new creation? Do you believe that? What's the new creation? I'm an imitator of God. <laughs> That's the new creation. I'm an imitator of God. I chase the Word of God. I get the Word of God in me. You know, I was telling Scott today, we had a lot of talks about different ministries and things, and I said, here's the ministry. Here's what Band of Brothers is for. It's kind of like a young man went to Charles Haddon Spurgeon back in the 1800s, and the young man said, Mr. Spurgeon, Mr. Spurgeon, would you teach me to preach like you? Because by this time, Mr. Spurgeon was preaching, and there was 10,000 people coming to hear him. Now think of that. And a young man who really loves the Lord said, Mr. Spurgeon, teach me to preach like you. When you preach, there's a fire. There's a, you're not just giving out info. There's something going. And he said, here's what you do. Go spend time alone with God. Go spend time alone with God till he sets your soul on fire. And they will come to watch you burn. That's what it means to imitate the Lord. We, we should be burning with our passion for the Lord. It, it, it touches every part of life. That's what holiness is. That's the magnificence of it. You know, I, I look at these things and I, I think, how about this? As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. Well, that was me. But just as he who called you is holy, be holy in all that you do. You're an imitator. For it is written... It is written, be holy, because I'm holy. There is no other thing to do. There's no other action. The one I gave to you in, out of Timothy. For God saved us and called us to live a holy life. He did this not because we deserved it, but because that was the plan from before the beginning of time to show us his grace in Christ Jesus. Men of God, so... Everything that's not of faith is sin. Everything. And without faith, it's impossible to please Him. Okay? So, you have to ask the question today. I'll ask it. Are you an imitator of God? Do you want to be holy? Can people watch and copy your behavior? Would you let them come alongside you and say, listen, watch my life. Listen, not just listen to me, but watch my life in good and bad, the high times and the low times, and imitate me. Are we ready to do that? That's what that hat's all about. Men of God make a difference. Can you live with no condemnation? Can you finally be done with condemnation? Can we worship? Can we live before the Almighty? You know, you guys, you may not know this or not, but you've been supporting Overwhelmed by Grace with your offerings here. And therefore, you guys are sending me to Texas, whether you know it or not. <laughs> okay? I'm going to be gone for three months. And I'm going to go there by the grace of God if I'm allowed to live. And I am going to light their fire in a way their fire has never been lit. I expect to, to live in a place, and you can pray for me, because I'm hoping to start a band of brothers out there. I'm only there ten weeks, actually, in Texas, only ten weeks, but... I thought, Father, let's go light it up. And who's sending me? You guys. I don't know how all this is going to work, but you're going to have another man speaking to you, and you can imitate his life. 
He's not teaching you the basics of theology and doctrine. He has it. I promise he has it. That man studies the eternal breath. But you're going to be able to hear a man speak differently than I do in a different way. Of course, he's younger than me, you know. He's, he's yeah. What's really weird about this Scott is he's the same age as my Scott. And by the way, his name means loyal. Scott means loyal, and that's who he is. He's loyal to God, and he'll be loyal to you. God's already put a fire in his soul, and he's going to fan that fire, you know, and you can watch him burn, and you get too close, you will catch fire. <laughs> you will absolutely catch fire. So, Gary, let's, uh, do you guys have the words for the last song? <laughs> I hope. <laughs> okay. Let's, is, it, is it the one uh, as a man of God? Oh, that's going to be the way cool way to, for me to leave here. But well, what, what are we doing here? What are we coming up here for? We're going to pray over you, buddy. Oh, we are? Yeah. And then, and then sing or <laughs> yeah. something. Uh, so the way that we do it, right? Come here and sit. <laughs> I'm going to sit down. down. Seats. Yeah, down front. Yeah, so uh, it's an amazing journey that we're all on, isn't it? It's so much fun. Uh, and what a joy it is to be able to send this man out again. He's like, he's, he's a caged animal, right? If, if, you, if you attempt to keep him in one spot, um, yeah, you're going you're gonna to lose fingers, toes, all that other stuff. So we have, we have to send him out. And we are doing it by uh, the Lord's grace, his mercy. I'm learning mercy, brother. I'm learning grace. Um, but it is our pleasure to pray over you and... Guys, let's gather around him a little bit and lay hands on this man. And if you're sitting there, you can extend your hand. And, and we're just going to pray the blessing of the Almighty on this man. That he, Father, Lord, we love him so much. Uh, I thank you for Gus. I thank you for who he is. I thank you, Father, that before the foundations of this world, you said, I will claim Gus as my own. He will be adopted into my family he will be an heir to everything that I have. His brother is Jesus Christ, just as Jesus Christ is our brothers. Father, we thank you for that gift. There is no greater gift in all of your creation than our redemption. And Father, we are so grateful and we're, we don't know how to express it with words sometimes. But Father, as he, as he and his bride get ready to travel uh, east, Father, I just ask that you bless them once again. Father, renew them. As they go to Texas, Father, there's so much work to, to do. This little church that they're coming to, they don't know who's coming. They haven't met Gus the way that we've met him, the way that we know him. Some of those men know him, but Father, I would ask that you just breathe on those people, that you begin preparing hearts right now, Father, that, that, that as they get there, that, that his exuberance for you just kind of takes over that small little town that now has a Tesla factory there. And, Father, that you just, uh, just light them on fire, Father. We love you. I'm going to pass this mic around a little bit, but I just, I just want you, Father, just to bless this man as we send him out to do your work, Father. We love you in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father and our God, I thank you for creating a man like Gus Best. I thank you that he's taking seriously Matthew 28, where you say go. He is going to go, and what a privilege and an honor and an opportunity for, it, for us, every one of us in this room, to send him. We are to go and make disciples of the nations. Our nation needs disciples. Texas needs missionaries just like Ethiopia, just like Africa, just like India, and we get the honor and the privilege to send a man you have prepared for this very moment to go there to light the fire under these people to make disciples, and then that will spread to the rest of the country. I am so grateful to you, Lord, that we are able to send him, that we are able to support him, not only financially, but in prayer. And we can give thanks. And we can have the joy of the Lord because he is doing what you've called him to do. And I thank you in our Lord Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Kurt, close it, would you? Oh, Lord, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for this man.
that you have prepared. Lord, we pray for him. We pray for his beautiful bride, Karen. We pray for traveling mercies. And when they get there, we pray for their ministry. We thank you that you have created in him a, a, just a, a stream of living water that flows out of him. May everyone that comes in contact with that stream through your Holy Spirit be drawn unto you and be changed in an instant to understand the beauty and the grace, the mercy of Jesus Christ. Lord, we just, I, I pray that you would use this man. You have, you have so used him here. We continue to pray that you would use him in Texas to be that adrenaline that just is infectious to the men and women of the town that you're bringing them to, to the church. It's not just the church. It is the entire town. Everywhere where he goes, he has an ability to just point towards you. Lord, we pray that you would use his gifts in a mighty, mighty way. And we, and we continue to pray. We continue to, to commit ourselves to the support through prayer, through finances for, for Gus and for Karen as they go. God, we thank you so much for the way that you are using them in Christ's name. Amen. Right. I can't believe I was looking back on my chart and this song we wrote in 2015. It's going to be kind of, kind of a signature song to me.
That's, that is our signature song at Band of Brothers. That is our signature song. And this man, by the power of the Holy Spirit, wrote that song. Isn't that a blessing? Aren't you glad he's here? And look at this band here. Man, guys. Hey, Rick, that was, like, that was really cool. You know what you were doing there? And harmonic and everything. And the guys in the drums. And men of God, this is a, should be a joyful season at the Christmas time. Please pray a blessing on each other. And may this be the most celebrative Christmas you've ever had, giving thanks constantly. Amen. And let people come up and imitate you. Yeah. Let them walk up and let them sit there and say, and learn how to give honor one to another. Because you have been rebirthed. Yeah. You have been made a new creation. You are a new creation. Believe it or not, you are a new creation. And it is a holy and divine time. So the blessings of the Lord. Oh, look at, hey, Doug. Okay. Oh, yeah. Hey, look at this guy. Doug, come on up here. Come on, Doug. He's did a trans test dummy. Did you have an opportunity this morning? Here, give, give, we have a mic for him. Crash test okay. dummy. Okay. Uh, normally you're up here. Oh, yeah, I am, but I was rolling down the highway. Rolling down. <laughs> I think I rolled three times. Eat that mic. Eat that mic, dude. Three times. So. What happened? I hit, I hit the ice. On 46 on the bridge, and uh, yeah, hit the guardrail, bam, the concrete rail, and then round and around. It rolled you three times. Yola bole. So thank the Lord, I'm sore, but it's like yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. We're praising God you're here. I was just asking God if I should rebuild the truck. But... <laughs> oh. Yeah. All right, All right. Uh, men of God, pray one for another. We're going to pray over this man. Thank you. Oh, you saw, uh, that's, uh, that's the lights we saw going out towards your place. We saw police headed out your way. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're here. Blessings on you guys. Thank you. Thank you.